coming up. The escape rooms are finally coming to Universal Orlando Resort, and we have another Halloween Horror Nights announcement on this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams, and I am joined alongside by my co-host, Rhino. Hello. It feels very weird doing this in the studio. I don't remember the last time we've sat in this space and done this. I mean, it's it's been a long, long time. We're hoping that quality-wise, for the listeners out there, it won't sound any different. I mean, visually, of course, it's a little different, but yeah, it's it's going to be nice being able to do one of these shows, Rhino, where I'm I'm looking at you, not through a digital screen. Digital, digital, get down. I like it. You and me. That's an NSYNC, I believe, a second album. Uh, third album? Or is that No Strings Attached? No Strings Attached is the second album. Hmm. Celebrity is the third album. That's that had the pop. one. Yeah. Pop. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I think Digital Get Down was the second one. Yeah. Anyway, it might that's what you remember reminding me of. But it was uh, the song that I would always sing to myself while I was working at Forbidden Journey, and I was like going would, would insane. Digital get down? No, 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 no. I would. The, so the I just got paid Friday. No, no the the sec, So the secondary platform at Forbidden Journey, you are stationed all by yourself. You have a headset, so you hear everything going on in the main one, but you're just by yourself unless guests come up there to ride. And so you just hear the Potter music constantly playing. And if you didn't want to hear that, you had to kind of like listen to something in your own head. And this was obviously, I, I'm hoping it's still somewhat the same, but this was back in the day where like cell phones, even though you were by yourself, if you pulled out your cell phone and you got caught, then you would get in major trouble because who knows when a guest would walk around the corner and see you on your phone. So uh, it was a big no, no. So you're just there by yourself. So in my head, I would always try to come up with words to, uh, to pop, but in Harry sick Potter, and rhyme, tired so. of all these it's, muggles talking about. That's what it is. I'm sick and tired of hearing all these muggles talk about. What's, What's the deal, deal with that wizard, wizard life? And when, when it's going to fade out, out? <laughs> you just got to realize we're not doing magic tricks. We got the gift of wizardry. Something I can't remember it all there, but I, <laughs> you you pretty much guessed the first part. It didn't didn't take me long to come up with that. It was. Once you got to the more parts, like, doesn't matter about the broom I ride or the coke around my neck. <laughs> it's the funny part isn't you making the lyrics. It's the fact that you knew the lyrics to the original song so well to be able to redo it. Also, Digital Get Down is from No Strings Attached, which also had Space Cowboy just got paid. It makes me ill to see you. Man, that. That was a pretty good album, I feel like. Pretty, uh, one track after another. It absolutely I was forced was. to listen to it repeatedly when it came out. Yes, as as I was, too. And then I believe, too, that my sister and her friends had the DVD of the uh, the No Strings Attached concert that was released, oh. too. So then it was like extra forced in my face. But I guess this is a great time to remind you that this show and all the other shows are brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content, if you've made it this far into the show. <laughs> I was going to say it's brought to you by Ron Perlman. <laughs> if you've made it this far in and you haven't given up yet, uh, it's brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. You know, obviously you work with amazing Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. If you decide to use them, it costs you no extra money and it supports us. So it's win, win, win. Uh, get a free no obligation quote today on your Universal Orlando vacation at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Okay, Rhino, let's talk about escape rooms because this is one of those topics that I remember the first time we talked about it all the way back in the grand old year of 2018. And that is when uh, the first talk of escape rooms popped up. Uh, I remember uh, back then we had Charles Boda working for the Diz, and he was one of those people who obsessed over pulling patents oh, yeah. and trademarks. And I don't – honestly, you, I can never remember who was like first uh, – which site was first to find this or that. It was probably Orlando Business Journals. But I remember when he found the, the Universal's great movie Escape. 
trademark, I believe it was, and and jumped on it right away. So uh, he he popped on that, and I remember like very quickly we had a a fun conversation where we just threw out ideas for what they could do with escape rooms. And I know we mentioned that on a show that we did months ago, where you know as the escape room idea was starting to gain steam well, and traction. It was, it was in a survey, wasn't it? Recently, like yes. in the last year, I think they had put it in the survey where there was like, there was something about a Saturday Night Live related thing too. Like maybe yeah. that would have been a comedy club or something. I don't remember. Yeah. And, you know, it's just been gaining traction over the years. And then as work permits started to, you know, surface and the groove closed down it all, everything was pointing to the escape rooms finally coming to be. And we finally got the announcement that Universal's great movie Escape would be debuting at Universal City Walk this fall, 2022, in the former space of the Groove. And, you know, we got the announcement one day, and the very next day, the signage was up for it. So they are plugging along at this thing, getting Wait, it ready. Wait, the movie thing's already, the sign's already up for the it? The signage is Holy already smokes. up on front of there. Also, we started the show, and I said Ron Perlman, and I realized too late, and now we've gone so far away that I don't want people to, that's the guy who played Hellboy. I yeah. meant... Lewis Perlman was their manager, and that was the joke I was trying to make earlier. But it is insane to me. The sign for this escape room is already up. Wait, where is it? In the groove? Yes, uh, the escape rooms are going to be in the former spot of the groove, which I think is a better, a better fit for it. I have not been to any of the clubs in years, and I just feel like where City Walk could go, they're better investing in entertainment like escape rooms and in that rather than the party atmosphere at night but maybe that's just because i'm getting older too and i'm no longer really doing that but uh, i i think it's a great use of the space but uh there's going to be two escape rooms featured in universal's great movie escape and those two escape rooms are going to be based on jurassic world as well as back to the future which that's obviously very exciting that Back to the Future is going to be featured at Universal again in some capacity yeah. besides a shop or just references or Doc Brown walking around the streets of Universal Studios, Florida. It's like it's now it's now getting reinvested back into the property, which I think is just massive, massive news. Very, very exciting. Nothing against Jurassic World. You know, obviously, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, still a very popular franchise, something that will be popular for years and years to come. But Back to the Future, it feels like it feels like Universal saying, listen, we know you guys love the tribute stores and you love this next level theming and you like us pulling back uh, all these properties that are no longer big at Universal. Well, you know what we do? We miss them, too. So let's let's put them here and. So very exciting that Back to the Future will be part of it. I just hope that, you know, it, it succeeds in that way. So they say, listen, we need to build more escape rooms based on older attractions and movies that are no longer Well, my part. guess is these will eventually rotate rather than... Oh, I see what you're saying. Theme to the stuff from the... Okay. Yeah. But I the Jurassic World one seems really interesting to me because I'm like, is it... When I think of Jurassic as an escape room that would take place in the Jurassic setting, I think that there's got to be like an animatronic dinosaur or something like that involved or a puppet of some sort. Maybe not animatronic. That's really far. But like something where like we are in threat of dying from the dinosaurs, right? Uh, like, I'm assuming that one's got to be a little scary. I, I would say you're more onto it with an animatronic than a puppet because someone's not going to want to do that every be single time. Be the guy who's, <laughs> I guess, there's there are a lot of questions that we we still need answered with it because like with escape rooms I've I've done like small pop up ones that aren't in like super themed environments like literally pop ups where usually those ones are thirty minutes but most of the escape rooms I've done are hour long experiences where they give you an hour to escape and if you've never done one anymore that it's literally that it is basically you kind of you choose a theme or a level of difficulty and um and then you get told like hey your job is to escape uh you know the example the first one i ever did it was there was an art heist happening and you had to solve the clues to figure out who was doing the heist and when you found out you could stop them and then that would allow you to escape from the room and uh so there's always that objective that you have and then you have to basically solve puzzles and you know you s 
it's basically like there could be a scavenger hunt in the room where you have to find certain clues that will help you move on to the next portion um there it, it just it always varies but yeah your your entire goal is to continue finding these clues put together the pieces of the puzzle so you can eventually escape and uh it's just how much time they'll give you and how much uh how how much the difficulty is of it that you know it's it could be extremely frustrating or it could be very rewarding if it's very challenging and you're able to find your way out and uh with that like i want to know are these going to be 30 minute escape rooms Mm -hmm. where there's not a lot of time so they can get more people through is this going to be an hour-long experience so it can be really in-depth uh are they going to be challenging or are they going to say well you know with taurus coming here we probably want to keep it as easy as possible so that way you know Mm. more people feel accessible to it because that to me that kind of it kind of goes against the whole purpose of escape rooms to i don't want to be spoon fed when i go into it yeah it's uh, you know and i have been in ones where it's like i'm i'm there with my friends who are also smart people who like puzzles and games and i failed them because as a team we didn't work together so then too like how many people are you going to need to do these escape rooms because you know sometimes you're you're afraid like oh i don't want to get put with a family that we don't we don't know how to cooperate together but then sometimes i've been i went in one too with my family where we were put with two other random people and we're like this is going to be a disaster i have no idea who these people are and how are we going to work together to get out and Then it ended up being like that we all just clicked and we were on the same page. So there's a lot of little questions like that that I have. But uh, in terms of the themes themselves, I think it's just really exciting that they chose those two. And I do hope that maybe there's like animatronic elements in the rooms being involved, uh, because uh, one of the, the highlights of it is that the team that is responsible for creating Halloween Horror Nights houses is responsible Ooh. with building these escape rooms. And yeah, that's, uh, that's, you know, that's a big deal because Halloween Horror Nights, it's so, so detailed and it's so rich in all the little touches that are added in. You can see that during the lights on tours, but you also can still see it in a way at night as you're walking through those houses. So very exciting. And Universal says with it, through interactive state-of-the-art missions, captivating storytelling, and intricately detailed sets, guests will be swept into the dinosaur adventures of Jurassic World or the time-traveling chaos of Back to the Future as they solve their way through multi-sensory experience like no other. And uh, the other big, uh, you know, question that we have with it too, besides when is it actually going to open? Besides fall twenty twenty two, is how much is this going to cost? Because yeah. you know, good escape rooms, I the ones that I have done that I thought were the best and the most detailed rooms and the best game playing experience, those were like thirty dollars. And so with this one, I could easily see this being somewhere forty to fifty dollars. I was going to say, my get, I would put money on like it being like $50. Yeah. I'd even say like 60 It could potentially be up to that. And I know that seems like a lot per person to swallow, but, you know. If, it, if it's an hour-long escape room, I think it's going to be like 60 65 Yeah. Yeah. And if it's a 30-minute one, I could easily see them sticking more to that $30 range maybe. But that's, it, it, that's a big question to find out. But I... I'm just so happy that this is finally coming. You know, I know escape rooms have already, I don't want to say dwindled in terms of popularity, but as more popped up, it seemed like, you know, there was more choices out there. So it was, it wasn't as hard to get like that great time that you wanted to book one and at the, the, your favorite place and choice to do escape rooms at. So uh, it's, uh, you know, maybe universal is a little bit too late on it, but it's a different offering at city walk besides just dining, shopping, the movie theater, the mini golf. It's something fresh new that I think is going to help reinvigorate that entire area. And I cannot wait for it. Oh, I am. I haven't done an escape room yet, so I'm excited that these will be my first. (sighs) Ryan, I am so excited for the journey we're going to get to go to on it. And we're going to start, if we have a choice, we're going to start with Back to the Future. I can already promise you that. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. Back to the Future. Yeah. I'm wondering about, we we talked about it earlier, I think, um, or maybe you and I didn't talk about it. Maybe I was talking about it with CJ before I was going to the airport, but it was like a um, repeatability was like 
how many times do you think you can do it? Can you just do it once? Or do you think there'll be like an ABC storyline? So like they'll ask, have you done this before? Yes. Okay. Somebody's done it before. Okay. Well, we're going to give you the B story. You know what I mean? Like, do you think that that'll be a way to keep it, keep it yes. going? It, it absolutely will. I don't know. I, a, I don't know if they're going to do that. And B, I don't know how many different scenarios they would come up with in the room, but I think they're, they need to do that because there are plenty of other escape rooms that do have that. So that way, if you end up in the same room that you were already in before, you don't just immediately solve all the, the steps. So it's something they, they have to do. Like it's in terms of good game design. Like, I, I feel like that would be the starter from the beginning because you want repeatability in there. I mean, other than that, the only way to have the repeatability is to make it so difficult that people have to keep doing it if, if they actually want to finish. But I feel like, too, part of the fun and drive of wanting to go back and do more escape rooms is actually being able to win and complete it you you feel good about it and say yes i can't wait to do it again with a different theme when you fail it kind of sucks you it really feels like you know that it feels like the air is completely drained from the room like i don't i don't want to do this anymore this is i i just wasted my money and i failed so it's like it's the second most discouraging thing after going to you know, watch a team that you're rooting for at a sporting event and they lose. And it's like, I, I could have been doing team. anything else. Yeah. I could have been doing anything else right now. And I just watched them lose. How dare they? But uh, yeah, I, I hope, I hope they have lots of different ones. And I hope that they're willing and able to switch out rooms if it feels like it's getting a little stale or hopefully the better thing is that they're able to add on and create different rooms down the road so that way they can feature different movies and you know what if that requires a separate space in a separate area then go for it why not if it works invest just don't don't make it your entire persona that'll never work but ryan Mm. you want to talk about halloween horror nights I always want to talk about how it went on. I know. I know you do. So we have to talk about the announcement. The only other thing I I feel like I I want to mention it as an interim just because we don't have a lot to say about it because it already happened. But uh, last week during the show and during the hiatus, we not our like, it's not like we took a hiatus on purpose. It just kind of happened. But uh, we we were off from recording during the time period where the Universal Monsters Cafe completely closed. And then it reopened briefly for two nights for the Universal uh, Orlando and former parties. And now it is completely closed off with construction walls up with the minions all around it because it's most likely becoming the minions cafe. But the, I know that we're going to have monsters inside Epic Universe, but this one hurts real bad. I, I know we just did a review there recently where, you know, it's, we liked your sides and it wasn't the best meal we had, but just losing a themed restaurant that that environment was so fun to be in with no notice at all. It, that killed me. Like I, I, I remember waking up that morning that it happened and seeing like, Oh, it's permanently closed. I'm like, well, it, yeah, sure. It's going to permanently close. And then everyone saying, no, it permanently closed. So there was no last opportunity to yeah, go through. There was no send off. Yeah. And it's universal. They're, they're smart enough to know. They announce when things are closing. So that way you can give them a proper send off. I mean, they made freaking merchandise for Shrek 4D for its closure. And, you know, they, they've, they've always hyped into that. So for a restaurant that a lot of people loved it, kind of bummed me out that they couldn't have just said like hey heads up it's going to be the final day of operation for this place so if you want to come through and take a look at all the different rooms and really really embrace the theming that we put inside here you have one last chance but luckily since we went there you know i got photos of different portions of the restaurant some some less than others so I, i've looked back at the photos a couple times here and there like ah, i'm gonna miss this place I won't miss the food as much, but I'll miss the place. It feels a little weird because it's like, I know that the rumor being that there's the monsters area in the Epic Universe, which I feel like is all but confirmed if you watch any sort of aerial footage of stuff. But like, so there will be a presence for Universal Monsters, but I also am like, I want it to be at the original Universal Park too. It's like, I don't want it to just, 
I don't want them. I get what I get what they are or have to do or need to do, and things become stale, and you want them to be. And Monsters Cafe did really technically, I guess, was kind of just like plop there that didn't really yeah. have anything to do with it around it. And so I get the aesthetically or whatever you're trying to create some sort of fluid story environment. So, but it's like one of those where I'm like, I still want it there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> because put it, it near the mummy. It, it was different in that. Any new restaurant they build, I feel like, is going to be, we want to immerse you in the world of Universal Monsters. And these rooms were more, your the restaurant in general was celebrating. And yes, there was immersion in it. They, like, if you're sitting in the Frankenstein section, it's themed to Frankenstein. And if you're sitting in, you know, the... The more sci-fi section, it felt like you're in a sci-fi movie. It was immersive, but it was just, it was a tribute and a salute to these different monster movies versus just saying like, oh, I want you to feel like you're in Transylvania and you're in a monster movie, which if that happens, I'm sure it'll be cool too. But I feel like there was still a, there's still a place for a restaurant like what the classic Monsters Cafe was. So it's upsetting, but I'll move on from it. I, I, I just hope whatever is in that new park that there will be some sort of uh, th- dining experience. I yeah. hope. I don't know. I I think I think that will be a good likelihood. Um, just just as it was a very good likelihood that at some point in time we would see the return of Michael Myers. Yeah, baby, to Halloween Horror Nights. Well, he is back in 2022. And no, I'm not talking about Mike Myers, even though I threw in the yeah, baby feel like we had to because rhino and i are the two biggest people in the mike myers fan club out there in the world rhino's favorite movie if you didn't know is the love guru and uh because of that we always have a great appreciation for him but no uh michael myers our favorite slasher from the halloween franchise is coming back because they are once again bringing the 1978 halloween film to life at halloween horror nights on both coasts and i'm tentatively excited for this one i okay so i i had to look back and it was 2014 was the year they did the house the 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 house house like it had the house like it was the thing and i do very distinctly that was before i worked here and i remember walking up to it and being like this is gonna be scary (laughs) and like i remember they had like the i still see that car every now and then the station wagon and they had the girl with the telephone wire around her neck uh, and like uh, and yeah uh, and like that's before you're even in the house you know like that was inside the house she was inside that was in okay okay but like i remember the walk up to the house because i went into it i think before like as the sun was setting so it was very clear like okay and i wasn't like eased into it yet i think i only went into like two houses that year because i was too scared but like um i remember thinking wow the production level on this event is incredible like that is the house that always sticks out to me and then in 2015 i went to universal hollywood's halloween horror nights for the first time and they had i believe they had done halloween the first one that year unless it was the second one when was halloween two for us was it 2015 or 2016? 2016 yeah so they, I believe, had done the first one that year because I think it was also like you went through the house, but their ending, I remember being like the ending was different, but I was thinking like, this is such a solid, like they did such a good job with the story because I also don't think I'd actually seen the original Halloween at that point. At that point, I've seen it now. But like I, so for me, it was like, will the story come? I knew who Michael Myers was. I'd seen like Halloween 4. I'd seen random ones. I just, had, I don't think I'd ever actually seen like the first one. And it was... I, I remember being very taken back by the production that went into it that year. So I'm kind of hoping they still do the same, the facade and everything again and stuff. But yeah. I mean, Halloween is a safe bet. I feel like it's a, it's a guaranteed, like people know Halloween. It's a character. It's a, you know, a signature, signature yeah. item. It, it's, it's absolutely a safe bet. And that's also something that, you know, and I, I don't want to overanalyze this and I don't want to be that type of fan. But, yeah, it's a safe bet in something where I wish sometimes they would take bigger chances on on some properties. But that being said, I, I, you know, in terms of the first couple of years of me going to Halloween Horror Nights, uh, I, I can't think of a house that had kind of the same amount of impact as 
as uh, Halloween did for me. I mean, I, I remember in 2013, An American Werewolf in London blew me away. I remember the year that they did uh, La Llorona. That one like took me by storm too. And the Nightingale's House, or not Nightingale's, um, the one they did on uh, Edgar Allan Poe that they had. I think that one was called Nevermore. And I, I went in that one. That one would have been 2011, maybe somewhere in there. And I've talked about HR blood and guts before that the, going through all the different holidays. That one had a huge impact on me. But Halloween was, uh, you know, that one was massive because I, I loved the Halloween movies growing up. I, and I'm not going to say all of them. I specifically loved Halloween and Halloween, too, because I I taped both of those off of like AMC one year and I would rewatch those but it I think after that it would always jump to like Halloween 4 because mm -hmm. they always skipped Halloween 3 and I never had enough tape to finish the uh to finish Halloween 4 so I just always would stop recording after 2 and uh so because of that I loved Halloween and Halloween 2 and that house it, it was literally brought to life in the greatest way. Uh, it, it told the story of that movie so wonderfully and had those scary moments. Like you said, like the, the sound of the car horn honking and then having that, that bass music note that come in as soon as he starts strangling the girl in the car. Like that is forever burnt into my brain. And it was, it was actually fun when they announced that they were doing a repeat of the 1978 house. Uh, I I went back to my video because I I have video of all the houses back until 2014, and so I went back through my footage and I put together a little bit of a, a highlight reel of inside that house and and put it up. And it was like it was a trip going through. And the one thing I'll say is I'm so glad our cameras are so much better because <laughs> yeah. I'm like yeah. I I had to ruin the footage in terms of like overexposing it and there's so much noise and grain in it but it's the only way to see anything because the camera i was using back then was so crappy and, and not meant for low light of the all the houses but it was a solid house and you know so many years have passed since that considering we're now eight years from the first time they they did that house i i don't think it's just going to be a replica of the the original one that they did in 2014 i i think it's going to be like more like texas chainsaw massacre where they said hey we're going to repeat this property but we're going to do a different house and it, you know as long as it is different i think i think i'm going to be okay with this one and i maybe it's not going to have a lot of repeatability for me because you know it's we've had i loved the halloween house in 2014 i liked halloween 2 in mm -hmm. 2016 the Halloween four house in 2018 wasn't bad. We just didn't do it a lot because of its weird opening time. And in terms of when we would go for stay and scream. So we ended up only doing that one like five times, but uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful for it. So at the very least, hopefully we'll get some cool merchandise with Michael Myers on it because he's the man, the boogeyman, the boogeyman, the boogeyman. Yeah, I uh, I'm excited to see what else comes out of it. That's all. Yeah. I think maybe it's just because it's a property that's been utilized multiple times. I'm kind of like, I mean, I am hoping for a property that's also been utilized multiple times at this point yeah. too. But I I'm still like I said, it is Halloween is Halloween aesthetically. Yeah. So it's it's a good it'll be a good solid bet. So we have Halloween yeah. and we have the mo classic monsters, and so mm -hmm. I feel like we're off to a start. I think we're off to a nice, uh, it feels slow, but a nice solid start. I really do. Even if Halloween is a complete replica of the last time they did the house, that was eight years ago. And I feel like the audience has changed completely from that time. You know, there's there's the people who have been doing Halloween Horror Nights the same amount of time that I have. There are a lot that have been doing it even longer. And they've seen so many houses that I can only dream of seeing. Uh, but, you know... To bring back a house and almost replicate it completely from something that was around eight years ago, like I, I feel like that's enough time that they could bring something back like that. Uh, granted, they'd be rebuilding all of the stuff, so it would also be kind of silly to do that. But you know, it's when when Walking Dead hit big, that's when a lot of people were coming for Walking Dead stuff, and then when Stranger Things hit, you know that 
people were coming specifically because of Stranger Things and being in, you know, introduced to what the event was like. Same thing happened for uh, American Horror Story. That got people who were into that show to come here and see everything that it was about and then fall in love with the event. So I know there's people who, you know, 2018, 2019 might have been their first years ever, and they've always been upset that they missed the original Halloween house. So I, I feel like enough time has passed that it's definitely worth coming back to. Would it have been interesting to see it done based on the uh, the trilogy that's about to end? This Halloween trilogy with ending with Halloween Kills? Yeah. Might yeah, have I know, but the second one was so bad. But, yeah. that, but at the same time, you're like, well, it's not like you have to relive the movie. You just relive the iconic scenes of the movie. That's it. Halloween, Halloween Kills, Kills was the bad movie. Halloween ends, <laughs> ends is the new one. Yeah. yeah, which is, you know, right on the nose there. But yeah, Halloween, Halloween Kills, Halloween Ends. Evil dies that night of Halloween what night? Kills. What night? Evil. When does evil die? Tonight. Tonight. Yes. Evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. <laughs> <sighs> I, if you haven't seen the movie, get ready. Take a shot. Every time someone does that, you'll end up in the hospital. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which, oddly enough, half the movie takes place in a hospital, so it all comes together. So if you can watch the movie in the hospital, that might be the best way to watch the movie. But yes, those are the first two announcements. I expect to hear another announcement uh, shortly. And, you know, because I know Halloween Horror Nights is going to have a panel at uh, Spooky Empire, which is coming up. Potentially the weekend that this releases, or sometime shortly after that. But uh, I know I know they added a Halloween Horror Nights panel to Spooky Empire, so yeah, that, that's a great place to give an announcement or talk about a recent announcement at least. So maybe something something comes of it soon. But I'm getting ready. We're we're getting in. We're we're past triple digits for Halloween Horror Nights. We're 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 smack deep in double digits. It's coming up close. Coming up soon. Coming up soon. Not coming up close. Coming up close makes no sense. Yeah. It's coming on Christmas. Coming <laughs> down trees. I'll be honest. I lost my energy. We got, we like, we, I think we peaked this episode at the NSYNC talk and it yeah. only went down from there. I mean, there's no lyrics to the Halloween song, but we could probably write some between now and then. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween is a is a good 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 movie. Nah, I don't like it as much. We got to work Jamie on that Lee one. Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis avoids getting stabbed and murdered all the time. Uh, nah, I'm not. I'm not like it. Well, we're, you know what, Rhino? How about we end this episode so we can workshop this song? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I jog to the theme song sometimes from the new movie because it's a little more intense. Yeah, from the. The first one, the redo version of it from the second one is this weird operatic. Did not care for it. You know what? Whatever motivates you to run faster, you go for it. Yeah. Thinking that someone's behind you planning on murdering you. It does make me a little you. chumpy. Yeah. <laughs> it does make me a little nervous. <laughs> oh, good stuff. But that's ultimately going to do it for this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and you're watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments, questions, and video suggestions in the comments section. And if you are listening to this, please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if it's through a place where you can leave a rating and review, please do so. It would mean a lot to us. Uh, and of course, if you want to support us more, book a trip through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. However, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Rhino, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I don't you. know why I started waving. I, uh, <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, uh, no speech. No speech at all. But thank you to Rhino and thank you to everyone out there for taking the time to watch or listen to this. It truly is appreciated. We could not do this without your support. So thank you. But that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. But don't forget, we still haven't changed the name. Rhino, cue us out with the music. Beep, boop, 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 boop.